Hello, hello, lovely listeners. All of you ghouls and goblins. And everything in between. Welcome to Across the Veil with Zelda and Emma. Okay, hi, Zelda. Hello, Emma. How are you doing? You know, I'm doing pretty good. I am very excited to hear what you have to talk about today. Your hometown. So I am from like just outside of Philadelphia, but it's like, so it's like one of those things, like when you're going to college and people are like, so where are you from? I'm like, oh, I'm from Philly because it's better than saying like, oh, I'm from Marion Station. And they're like, oh, where's that? And I'm going to be like, it's in Pennsylvania, 20 minutes outside of Philadelphia. So it's just easier to be like that rather than being like, I'm from the second realm of Philadelphia. You know, whenever people ask me where I'm from and I say Singapore, it's surprising how many people who go, Singapore, oh my God, I love Japan. So yeah. I feel I feel your pain on a similar level with people oh, just man. do not know <laughs> geographically. It's worse for you because like people know where Philadelphia is, but they just don't, they get the whole country wrong with you. Yeah. They're like, Asia's the same. Yeah. Like Asia, it's teeny, it's this teeny, teeny, tiny little place. You know, it's all the countries are exactly the same. They share one language. No difference. Are you kidding me? But so because Zelda managed to find a cryptid that was literally from her old street, I also wanted to find one that was from my area as well. But Surprise, surprise, there are not many creatures crawling around Philly or its surrounding suburbs, which sucks. Like, there are definitely some Pennsylvania cryptids. Like, my sister told me about this one dude that I really, really, really want to do an episode about sometime called the Squonk. But what Philly does have a lot of is ghosts. And even though I really wanted to do a cryptid because I love cryptids, I accepted that I was going ghost. Gonna catch him all because he's Danny Phantom. Gonna catch him all because he's Danny Phantom. But so while I was looking up stuff, I found out that the old inn that's literally right across from where I used to live is apparently haunted as fuck, which was sick. So today I am going to be discussing the hauntings and happenings of the general Wayne Inn. So I don't want to be this girl, but Wayne like Bruce Wayne? Like, is this a descendant? Like, no, ancestor. That's what you call a descendant of Bruce Wayne means <laughs> Batman gave birth to this guy Bruce in the Man, revolution. Bruce Wayne's son uh, created this inn in 1704. Sure. <laughs> uh, but it had people murdered there during revolutionary times. And it's also had people murdered there like two years before my family moved in. Oh, so, hot damn. Okay. Yeah. Lots of murder. Bonker Tony Place. It may not surprise people that I grew up across the street from a haunted inn, but it surprised me. It surprised <laughs> if anyone's ever met Emma, you would know unsurprising information yeah. completely unsurprising information from a girl who looks like the grudge yep it's true it's true but i've never i've never been in the inn though because by the time that i moved there it had turned into a synagogue and jewish life center but i have been all over the civil war era graveyard that is also right across the street from me whoa and the creepy old stables that went with the inn and there was also the world's creepiest playground behind the inn, fully rusted over, terrifying. So I played on it all the time, obviously. <laughs> but yeah, I, so I've been like doing creepy stuff on the outskirts of the inn, but I never knew about its history or haunts until now. But I do have a confession before we dive into ghosts, mm -hmm. which is that I don't believe in ghosts <gasps> but like here's the thing I really 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 want to believe in them so I'm always looking for things like I want I just want to find evidence so badly I just want proof so badly but nothing has ever fully been able to convince me so I'm like I'm like a scared skeptic that's what I like to call myself because like I don't believe in them because I haven't seen definitive proof but that being said if I'm alone in a room and it's dark I'm like shit what if there's a ghost in here and what if it's right behind me or staring at me or in my bed with me or guiding my pottery yeah you know Swayze that bitch <laughs> what are your thoughts on ghosts do you believe in them tell the people I believe there is definitely energies associated with objects and places I have never seen a ghost, but I've definitely experienced sometimes in my life where I'm like, that's not normal. It's kind of places where the veil is most thin. Mm -hmm. um, and they're always in places that people have died horrible deaths. I just think there's energy associated. Mm -hmm. And is that ghosts? Maybe. Or is it more so just kind of centuries of neglect and bad feelings? Also, maybe. But... 
I definitely think there is something to them. They might not be the ghosts that we think of when we see Ghostbusters, but I do Who think... Who are you going to call? Ghostbusters! <laughs> One of my favorite movies of all time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel that. I respect that. So you're, you're more of a believer than me. Mm-hmm, definitely. But I'm not like... I don't want to see somebody's ghost, you know, taking a stroll through my house. I want to see one so bad. I know it would scare the shit out of me, but like I want to see one so bad. It would raise a lot of questions and give me an existential crisis, but the thrill. It'd be a horror movie in real life, and I love horror movies. One day. One day. We hope. Putting the vibes out there. I don't fuck with Ouija boards, though. No, I won't do them. Wait, let's let's make this pact right here, right now. Yes. If either of us dies before the other, mm-hmm. we have to haunt the shit out of the other girl. Obviously. Yes. We have to do that. We're doing it live on this podcast. I'm Will you haunt me? destroy your psyche. That's how hard I'm going to fucking haunt you okay no that's not allowed that's cruelty <laughs> what i'm saying is you need to like appear in a mirror and be like eh, and i could be like yeah and i'll be like yeah, yeah. <laughs> agreed 100 percent. if we were in person i would give you a pinky promise but we're not pinky promise i'll haunt your ass and that's what best friendship is <laughs> exactly but let's go in on the in. Yes. So I'm going to start with a little bit of history about it because this baby is fucking old and it's had a lot of historical icons go through its door. Ooh. So the General Wayne Inn was opened in 1704 as an inn for travelers going to Philadelphia. But in addition to being an inn, it was also a tavern. And at one point, it was even a functioning post office that was run by Benjamin Franklin when he was postmaster. Hey, pretty cool. He was part of a sex cult. Yes, he was. Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. He was part of the sex cult. It also played a decent sized role in the Revolutionary War because both the Continental and British armies wanted to get control of the inn since it was in a strategic area. So people like George Washington, the Marquis de Lafayette both stayed at the inn. You're just name dropping left and right oh, all I the know. characters from Hamilton and I, know. I love it. Also, General Mad Anthony Wayne stayed there twice. The first time was after a bad defeat and the second time was after a great win where he basically like partied for three days and that's why it's called the general way in. However, our revolutionary war heroes from Hamilton were not the only ones to take the inn. During the war, British armies gained control of the surrounding areas, and their Hessian, I believe it's pronounced Hessian, it could be Hessian, but I think it's Hessian, their Hessian soldiers, which were basically German mercenaries hired to fight as soldiers for the British, stayed in the inn, and this is important, keep that in mind. After the war, the General Wayne Inn continued to be a popular place for fine dining. And another name drop, Edgar Allan Poe actually frequented the inn. And it's said that he scratched his initials on a window pane that was later replaced. I guess old glass doesn't work as well as new glass or whatever. Find somewhere else to scratch your initials. I mean, you and I have scratched our initials <laughs> quite a few places, including concrete, um, bar tables, <laughs> bathroom mirrors, in red lipstick, which I think is the most on brand for you and I. But we've also done like bathroom doors as well at bars. Yeah, but never windows because windows get replaced. Y'all, get your get your vandalism game on point. Yeah, come, come on, on, Edgar. Come, come on, on Edgar. Edgar. Edgar, you pedophile. I love your work, but you were a pedophile. But later, the inn also served as a polling place and a restaurant, both of which are also important. But let's get into the supernatural. Mm-hmm. Yes. So most of my information comes from a research paper that was done when this 80s show called Unsolved Mysteries, which was recently revived on Netflix, when it did a segment on the inn. And the segment itself is super cheesy with ridiculous reenactments and horrible special effects. But the paper has lots of historical information and more importantly very detailed interviews. So let's get into the hauntings. So while there are some historical reports of activity, most of the reports come from Barton Johnson, the owner in the 70s and 80s, as well as his employees. While he says he never saw an actual ghost himself, he claims that there have been hundreds of occurrences of ghostly activity. Glasses on the bar would shake for no reason. There was banging and creaking on the walls, lights flickering on and off, cold gusts of wind, disembodied footsteps, napkins that were folded at closing time would be found strewn across the room in the morning, despite the locked doors. An employee opening up the restaurant once found the cash register completely filled with water while there was no leak. And once, a woman even reported a dinner roll flying out of her hand for no reason. Spooky. That's just annoying. I love that. Yeah. That's just, like you know, petty little 
tips and tricks. Yeah, they're all like the little minor stuff is just petty as fuck. They're just throwing shit around. But the true ghost sightings, like the ones with full-bodied apparitions, are actually pretty spooky. Though I think you'll get kind of a big kick out of this first one. An FBA? Uh, Well, this one's not (laughs) full-bodied. So here's a quote from a maitre d'. I was closing up the kitchen, and as I was going through, I saw, sitting on a chest of drawers, a decapitated head, just sitting there. It was very smoky, as if it was a projection on a screen or something. Only for a second, but I'll never forget it. He had a very painful expression. Thin, black, slicked hair. His ears stuck out a little bit. He had pencil-thin eyebrows and a pencil-thin mustache and no neck or anything. Just, just a head. He was just sitting there looking at me, but not sitting. I think he was just laying there because he was just his head. Yeah, with no neck. It's just kind of... Just chilling. But what do you think about that? I really like it. Um... I think it's very impressive that he got a good enough look to be able to describe the pointy out ears and all the hair. Like that's, like you get a good look at that. And this thing obviously scared him shitless enough that he took a mental picture. Mm -hmm. He really did. He said it deeply disturbed him. What's interesting about that description is that that doesn't sound like a revolutionary era ghost. That sounds like something from the 1920s or 30s. Actually, that's something I'll get into because it kind of, it's the mustache that does. So the thing is that the main sightings that people have seen are the Hessian soldiers and there have been a lot of sightings of them and people have had the same description of them and so Hessian soldiers would wear green uniforms with yellow lapels and then they also would have mustaches so it it kind of fits with that a little bit but it also to me Sounds like 1920s. Okay, so something kind of that I've always been wondered about ghosts from a lot of different time periods who all kind of live together in one place Mm -hmm. is that those fashion roasts must be (laughs) impeccable. It's like a revolutionary soldier looking at some guy from the 1920s like, "Mm, what the fuck are you wearing, sonny boy? (laughs) And like, once you've had a place that's old enough and you get ghosts, you're gonna get ghosts from a lot of different eras. Oh, yeah. Do they get along? Do they, is there, like, factions of ghosts? Yeah, I've always wondered that, too, if they're, like, if, like, the ghosts chill with each other. Do the ghosts know each other? Yeah. Yeah. I've always wondered that. Also, on the fashion roasts, I mean, if I died now, and I died in the same place as someone from, like, the early 2000s, I'd roast the shit out of them in their juicy couture, full sweatsuit, with their concealer lips. I would. I'd do it. I have no shame. So here are the full-bodied apparitions that aren't just ahead. The main ghost sightings have been of Hessian soldiers. Legend has it that when the Hessian soldiers gained control of the inn, unbeknownst to them, the revolutionaries had built a secret tunnel in the cellar that led to a neighboring field. Accounts differ, but it's said that when a young Hessian soldier was sent to the cellar to procure wine for a victory celebration, he was ambushed and killed by the revolutionaries hiding there. They promptly buried his body in the tunnel so it wouldn't give them away, and there he has remained. People have reported seeing this sad, scared soldier in the cellar multiple times throughout history. The first time was over a hundred years ago, when the inn was used as a polling site, and it was actually recorded, like in the supervisor's official report to the Board of Elections. So he said that one of the women working at the polling site went down to the basement to get more ballots, and when she came up she was shaking and terrified, and told her supervisor that she'd seen a soldier in a green uniform. A longtime bartender of Johnson's claimed that he saw the soldier at the bottom of the basement steps near the wine cellar. The psychic who visited the inn for unsolved mysteries claimed that she also had a vision of a young, scared soldier crouching in the cellar, like he was hiding. In 1985, a medium contacted the owner of the inn, who I believe was still Johnson, but I'm not totally sure, and told him that the dead Hessian soldier had come to him in a dream to tell him that he was not at peace but rather tormented because he had not received a proper burial, and that he wanted the medium to locate his remains so he could be buried in a dignified manner. So the medium goes and he asks if he can dig up the area of the cellar that the soldier said that he was buried in, and because the medium also happened to be a building contractor and would provide all the equipment and expensive, the owner said, okay. So they dug for months, and while they never found a secret passageway, they did find an old root cellar and some unidentified bones before they had to stop because Loki, the parking lot, was going to cave in. Human bones? It says unidentified bones, and they say they never found a full human skeleton, but bones were found. The Hessian soldiers have been seen above ground too. A former hostess in the 1960s had a similar experience. She said that while she was setting up for dinner, 
She heard someone calling her name over and over again. When she turned around, she saw a frightened soldier standing in the stairwell. She said he looked startled when she looked at him and asked him, what is it? And just like that, he disappeared. Yeah, he probably saw her 60s fashion sense and was like, oh, women showing <laughs> legs? Uh -uh. He was like, oh, you slut, you absolute slut. Do you think it was him uh, calling her name? She says that it was him calling her name because she said that there was nobody else there. It was just her setting up for dinner. Bart Johnson also claims one soldier likes to go up and down the bar and blow on the backs of women's necks, which is low-key sexist. And it's only women. It's only women. It's literally only women. He's just like... Cool. Glad he's dead. Literally perv. He's not like our sad boy in the basement. Also, at one point, a medium contacted Johnson to do a seance there because she had heard that there was a lot of energy. And during the seance, she claimed to have seen 17 ghosts. So Johnson was left convinced that the inn was haunted after two locked doors opened by themselves during it. The oldest son, who didn't believe in ghosts before, said that the room abruptly chilled for no reason, and that he saw more than one apparitional face appear over the medium's face. However, his youngest son and wife, who were also present, were not convinced, but you can't please everyone. So those are the reports of ghostly activity that I've found to be the most compelling. There are a few others that are like, we saw two young boys there, but it just doesn't match historical documents at all. Yeah. I'll leave this with a special quote from Barton Johnson himself, direct from the TV show. I don't believe in ghosts, but I know they're here. <laughs> okay, dude. Okay, yeah. Sure, that's a sentence that makes complete sense. Go off, King. Like, sure. <laughs> but so here's the tea. So I've, I lived right across from there for like 20-ish years. And I've never, I've been all over the place. I've never been inside. But like my house shakes like a motherfucker all the time. But it's literally because we live right near trains and like trucks go by all the time. So I'm just like, I don't think the shaking is anything. Like I just, I, I've i never seen anything. And there's structural integrity problems with old buildings anyway. So the fact that the building is so old, I mean, that's probably why, you know, things move a lot. And the trains, you're right. That's definitely uh, explainable. Yeah, I do think it's interesting that people have seen like, or reported seeing this specific ghost over and over again in that one specific spot. To me, that would be the most sort of concrete evidence, but still not, not quite enough. Also, side note, from what I've read, there have been no other reports of haunting since. Since what date? Since like the 19, the late 1980s. There have been new owners and nobody else has said a single thing. So there was a murder though, another murder in addition to the Hessian soldier. Um, and it's actually like pretty, pretty sad, pretty dramatic. So in 1995, the inn became a restaurant after it was bought by executive chef Jim Webb and his best friend and business partner, Guy Cilio or Cilio. Um, so on December 27th, 1996, Webb was found shot to death in his office. And because the restaurant was having financial trouble, the police were quick to accuse Cilio, Cilio, shit, I'm just gonna call him Guy, were quick to accuse Guy However, Guy's girlfriend, a 20-year-old assistant chef, Felicia Moise, provided an alibi for him on the night of the murder. And she said that she and Guy had left the inn at the same time, but drove in different vehicles to dinner. However, forensic evidence linked Guy to the gun that killed Webb. And it turned out that Guy had doubled back, shot Webb to death, and then just zoomed to dinner. So basically, he murdered his best friend in order to get $650,000 of life insurance money from their partnership policy because Webb was going to end their partnership and shut down the inn, but he was convicted in 2001 and sentenced to life in prison. But what's even sadder is that on February 22nd, 1997, Felicia committed suicide and they think it's because she realized that her boyfriend had set her up as his alibi and just was unable to live with it, which is really sad. It's pretty sad for her, but I'm going to be honest with you. If you are so stupid to kill me in a way that dumb, like, I'm so sorry. That's the dumbest way to kill someone. I know. I know. Why would you just leave the body there? 
there's better ways. There's better ways to frame someone and take the partnership money. There are so many better ways to do that. And so many better ways to get an alibi. Like, come on, bruh. Like, do the, if you're gonna do the crime, you gotta do the time. And by the time, I do mean planning a better murder than that. Yeah, no. I, I And it's insulting to your best friend to murder them in such a they, dumb if way. I'm, if I murdered you, I promise I would do it in the most dramatic way possible. Thank you. Thank you. It would be, you would get a great death or you would just disappear. And then somebody would do a podcast about you. You're welcome. Those are the two greatest options for me. Just as long as you don't like go out to dinner with a boy and double back, shoot me and keep going to dinner. It's just boring. And what are you even going to talk about at dinner too? It's like, Oh, why were you a little late? Uh, you know, Nothing. Tra- traffic. Traffic tra- Traffic was bad. And also, if you're not willing to talk about your murders with your partner, they're not the one for you. You gotta be honest and open with your, with your partner, and that includes murder. But yeah, that's what I have for you guys today on A Little Haunting Near My House. That was fantastic. I loved all the history. And you name dropped better than anybody oh, yeah. I know. Oh my god, yeah. I fucking name dropped the shit out of the Revolutionary War. But thanks for joining in, everyone. As always, if there's anything you want us to cover, drop us a little comment on that Instagram. Leave us a little review on that iTunes. We love hearing feedback from all of you. We've been getting so many lovely things, and it really makes us feel better. This podcast is entirely produced by just the two of us, and we are... Just us. Recent college grads who really are... We're looking for jobs in this economy, so this is keeping our creativity up and it's keeping us you know Mm -hmm. together during these very difficult times we're having a great time and it's just it's a pleasure guys it's dang pleasure all of your support means the world to us so zelda what's coming up what are you doing next week what's our new our new sort of theme so i thought a very cool theme for you and i to work on since you and i are such spooky creepy ladies ourselves why don't we delve a little bit more into spooky, creepy ladies from folklore or other stories? So I will be talking about an Indonesian, Malaysian, demonic ghost lady called the Pontianak. Ah, we're going going with more ghosts, but like it's like a ghost ghost creature hybrid, she's, it sounds like. She's a folkloric figure. Um, we love her. She's great. I was actually just reading a Vice article about her who called her a feminist icon. So get ready for some girl power! Well, I am so excited to hear about a feminist ghost creature lady who has been featured in a Vice article. So we will see you guys next time across the veil. <laughs>